What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another quick video here on the Fantasy Fellowship channel. My name is Kyle. Good evening, everybody. We're going to be going over the underdog ADP, looking at the rookies. And it's February right now, and I just think looking at this underdog ADP, especially if you guys play Dynasty Fantasy Football, this is a really fun way to kind of see the consensus rankings right now for how people are viewing these uh, this, this rookie class here. So uh, we're going to hop right into a screen share, and I'm going to go over the top, I think, 25 or 50 or so rookies on the underdog ADP list. So there's going to be a link in the, the comments or the description if you guys want to check it out. Uh, and then I did just do a video going over the top 250 or so. Uh, if you want to check that out, please do. But we're going to go down here and that's where I have this separate rookie ADP chart. And uh, we'll kind of just tease it a little bit, maybe go about eight at a time here. So um, again, if you guys play dynasty fantasy football, this one's for you. If you guys do play, you know, best ball and, and do that all on drafters and draft Kings and underdog, then this is cool to kind of get ahead and see what we're looking at here. But the first player off the board and again, underdogs half PPR and they have Marvin Harrison jr. The number one ranked rookie up here at wide receiver 11, which is pretty crazy. He's a top 12 wide receiver one already. Uh, and they have him going about 18th overall, which is middle of the second round. And uh, I really like Marvin Harrison Jr. The only thing that we don't know about Marvin Harrison Jr. right now is where is he going to play? I think the popular mock right now has him going to Arizona, which I really like the fit there. They need an alpha wide receiver uh, for Kyler Murray. So Marvin Harrison Jr. looking like the clear one-on-one. And he's got a full uh, almost – round and a half on the next guy here and that's Malik Neighbors and Neighbors is no slouch man I really like Malik Neighbors it's rare to see uh you know dynasty fantasy wide receivers uh be drafted in the third round as a rookie in, in you know in in just redraft kind of leagues and best ball leagues so Neighbors is really really good he actually graded out as the top receiver in 2023 for college football phenomenal out of the slot he's got a little bit of jamar chase to his game i like everything that i see from the league neighbors here so 36th overall that's end of the third round going off as wide receiver 23 i might click on that one i actually like that price uh moving on to the third guy here you have rome odunze the notre dame or the washington wide receiver my bad and he's set up in the back end of the fifth round right now about 57th overall going off as wide receiver 33 now he has a wide range of outcome i I think you're looking at Malik Neighbors being a mid top 10 pick, whether he goes fifth to the Chargers. Sometimes I see the Giants taking him. He's going to go somewhere nice and be the alpha wide receiver there, I think, right away. Odunze, he's been kind of mocked as high as like ninth to the Chicago Bears. I've seen that a lot. If he goes to the to the Bears, I don't know if I love that because he's got DJ Moore there. He's going to have to kind of be a Robin to a Batman for at least the a first year or two. So pending spot, pending landing spot for Romo Dunze going off as wide receiver 33. I don't know if the Bears can get two wide receivers in the top 33, but we're going to find out if he is a Chicago Bear or not. But otherwise, he kind of hovers around the 10th overall pick in the NFL draft right now. Uh, number four, you have Brock Bowers, and he's going almost 80th overall, and that lands him squarely, I believe, in the, is that the sixth round right now. Tight end seven off the board. So you know, we had a, a really weird year last year with rookie tight ends kind of going bonanza. Sam Laporta was the tight end one. You had flashes from Dalton Kincaid, uh, flashes from Luke Musgrave and some other tight ends here. So it was a really good rookie tight end year. I don't know if I can do that with Brock Bowers, but hey, if he goes to the Chargers, I might be willing to revise my ideas. And I've seen him go as high as fourth, fifth, sixth overall. You never know. Brock Bowers is really good. He's as rock steady as they come, and he's more of a receiver. He's still a really good blocker, but he's a really good receiving tight end. So Brock Bowers, interesting prospect here, number fourth in the rookie rankings. Uh, number five, you have Brian Thomas Jr., the LSU wide receiver. He led the NCAA in receiving touchdowns last year with 17. Big body guy, uh, and he can do so much more than just be your big bodied uh, receiver here going off about a pick after uh, Brock Bowers here. Wide receiver 40, you know, I'm interested here. If he goes to a nice spot, and I've seen him kind of mocked in the middle of the first round, he's going to end up going to a decent team. Really depends on his landing spot. If he's drafted as the alpha wide receiver for a team, or if he's, you know, paired with somebody and he has to have to kind of, you know, be the number two. We'll see about Brian Thomas, but I'm very intrigued with him. Uh, he is kind of the clear number four wide, uh, wide receiver so far in most rankings I've seen. And then we get to Caleb Williams. So in a one QB format, Caleb Williams going off is about QB 16. I think that checks out. And again, we do not know his landing spot. Uh, I would say my money right now, if I had to guess, it's either Chicago Bears or it's the Washington Commanders. I don't know if the Commanders are going to move up to do it or if the Bears do something else with number one. But I, I think 
it's very likely it's one of those two franchises unless something else happens. But Caleb Williams, he's going to go to a good situation. And I, I like Chicago's situation offensively. And I really do like the commander's offense uh, with some of their weapons they have here. So Caleb Williams going to be a fringe QB2, potential QB1 right away as a rookie. Uh, Keon Coleman, the FSU wide receiver here. I'm not sure what to think about Keon Coleman yet. I didn't love what I saw from college tape. I think he's a little bit limited in what he can do. He's mostly an outside kind of bigger bodied receiver. He did return punts, so he's got some wiggle to him, but I'm not quite sure where I feel about him. Going off as wide receiver 51, you know, back end of the ninth, 10th round here, it looks okay. I might be, you know, really pending on where he goes for his landing spot. If he lands with like the chiefs or something crazy like that, then we're going to like what we see there. Uh, and then Troy Franklin, number eight on the board for rookies. And Franklin's got, <clears throat> you know, I, I would say this Harrison neighbors and Odunze. I really like those guys and their landing spots don't really matter too much to me. I, I think Brian Thomas, Keon Coleman, and Troy Franklin, these guys need a really good landing spot, a really good offense, really good quarterback to kind of elevate them because I'm not sure they're complete receivers. But I like Franklin. He's got speed, um, you know, elements of a little bit of Jamison Williams-ness to his tape if you watch him. Uh, but those are your top eight rookies. We'll move on to the next crop here. Uh, and there you see QB – Two for the rookie class, Jaden Daniels coming in at QB 18. He's got immense rushing upside. That's what breaks everything for fantasy football. So Jaden Daniels, the second or third overall pick in the NFL draft, very likely he's going to be a fun, uh, you know, number two quarterback for you in best balls and dynasties. Blake Corum uh, running back here coming in at RB 39. I like the value here, you know, pick 130. That's what 11th, 12th round here. That starts to make sense. And really his landing spot, is going to be everything if he's, you know, backing up somebody like, you know, if he goes to the Packers and he's Aaron Jones's backup, or if he goes to Tennessee and he's the one with Tajay Spears, you know, his landing spot's going to be very crucial here. But I like, I like Blake Corum, but I have trouble with his efficiency metrics and things like that. He did not pop in a lot of advanced stats. I'll cover that in a future video, but we'll see on Corum. I like the vision. You know, I like his creativity, but uh, a lot of the metrics concern me there. Uh, Adane Mitchell, the Texas wide receiver coming in at wide receiver 57, again, about 11th, 12th round. Jonathan Brooks, he had an ACL tear at the end of the year last year. If he was healthy, I think he would be my running back one, but I'm revising my thoughts there. Um, not sure what we're going to get out of Jonathan Brooks his first year, you know, from an ACL recovery. Probably not going to be a great year. RB40 right now, though. Maybe he's he's worth a look once we get more medical information on him. Lad McConkey, he's a Georgia wide receiver that's been growing and moving up boards. He's coming in at wide receiver 62. Um, again, 11th, 12th round range. Trey Benson, he's sometimes the running back one in a lot of dynasty rankings that I've seen. So Benson might be the first running back taken off the board. I can see him moving up here. He shouldn't be this low. So if you're drafting right now, draft Trey Benson. That's a phenomenal value. Uh, I don't know much about Xavier Worthy coming in at wide receiver 63, 147. We'll watch for his landing spot. I really like Bucky Urban. He is a speed back that can do some really nice things receiving the ball as well as running the ball in spurts. So uh, he's he's probably the smallest running back in this class. Um, and, and, you know, his, his landing spot is going to be crucial. If he goes to the Chiefs and he's the next Jarek McKinnon, that could be really fun. Uh, he's got, you know, kind of that Tariq Cohen, Jarek McKinnon archetype, I think, Tim. But he can be a better runner than those guys were here. So Marquise, Bucky Irving, a fun pick here late this, this late. Braylon Allen. Coming in at number 17, I'm still not sure how I feel about him. He's the biggest back in the draft class, almost 250 pounds. Doesn't offer much, you know, in open space. He doesn't have much, uh, you know, doesn't have much to offer outside just being a pounder. So if he goes to the right team and he's just going to get volume, maybe that makes sense. Maybe he goes to Dallas, something like that. That could be a good spot for him. Uh, and then I'm kind of surprised with how low Drake May is. Because I think worst case scenario, he's a commander or a New England Patriots. And uh, QB 24, you know, he's got all the goods to be a po your traditional pocket passer with a little bit of rushing upside. But Drake May seems a little bit underpriced here. That's a good value. Moving on to the next crop here, uh, Audric Estime, running back out of Notre Dame. He is really fun to watch. If you squint, he looks like Leonard Fournette just body wise, uh, but he's a, he's he's really good. He's got a lot of uh, long speed a guy that can hand the ball off to him and just watch him have fun and just smash some people. So I like Estime. Probably a top five running back in this class. He's way too cheap here. Jalen Polk, not sure what to think about him. The Washington wide receiver, he's more of like a number three, I think, receiver on an NFL team. I like Xavier Leggett. I have to do more research on him, but I, I think I would rank him higher than Jalen Polk. Um, he's probably like the wide receiver 10 or so in most rankings. Need to do more research on Devontae Walker as well, the North Carolina receiver. 
Uh, but these guys are all worth taking shots on. Leggett, Walker, Marshawn Lloyd, top five back. I really, really like Marshawn Lloyd. He's actually too cheap. He might be the best value that I'm seeing here. Jatavian Sanders, the second tight end off the board, he's way too cheap too. He's about pick 190. Uh, again, rookie tight ends, man. We saw what they did for us last year. And then kind of a draft darling right now is Malachi Corley. Unknown receiver here. Uh, he's got some slot ability. Wide receiver 82. That seems too cheap. He's got. Uh, he's a little raw, but he can do some nice things. Uh, just needs to get with the right situation. But that's kind of the top 25 or so. Uh, I'm going to just kind of scratch over the remaining top 25. Roman Wilson, I think that's too cheap. I like him out of Michigan. Ray Davis is a competent back. Don't like Will Shipley very much. He's not looking too good in a lot of the advanced metrics. Don't know about Michael Penix Jr. I just don't know if a team's going to draft him to be their QB1. He's in probably a mid to late first at best. Brendan Rice, interesting. Jerry Rice's son, I believe. We'll see where he lands. I don't love his profile, but I think he can be a you know number three, number four receiver in the league. Frank Gore, another veteran uh, son here. Frank Gore has a lot of nice things to offer, but again, I don't know if he's a starting running back, more of a backup. Malik Washington, Really interesting slot receiver here. He might be someone that's way too cheap right now. And then Jalen Wright, he was uh, a running back that popped in all the advanced metrics. So unlike Blake Corum, Jalen Wright popped in, in many, many of the advanced stats that I care about. Bo Nix, number 34. Ricky Pearsall, Florida wide receiver. J.J. McCarthy, Jermaine Burton, Cody Schrader, the running back. Another McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey this time. Dylan Lobb, running back. Uh, Johnny Wilson, the huge receiver out of Florida State. Dylan Johnson and Cade Stover. So 43 names for you guys ranked in the top 250 of underdogs best ball right now. But there you have it. This is just a fun way to kind of see what people are spending their money on in terms of best ball rankings and things like that. And it does have a little bit of weight to it. You know, that kind of sets the stage for a lot of rankings, I think, going forward. So, again, it's February 6th. As I record this, there's going to be a lot that changes. But either way, still fun to look at. And if you guys want to check it out, link in the description or the comment section, fantasyfellowship.com. Thanks for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace. Mm -hmm.